Welkom bij een nieuwe aflevering van onze CEO Talks. Naast mij zit Pascal Jury, CEO van de beeldvormingsgroep Agva Gevaart. U kunt aan hem... Uh, u kunt aan hem live vragen stellen de komende drie kwartier. De beeldvormingsgroep uit Mortsel onderging de laatste jaren een complete transformatie. Enige tijd geleden ging het gros van de healthcare IT tak de deur uit. En heel recent werd de offset divisie verkocht, de traditionele printplaten. Heel wat om over te praten, dus welkom, uh, Mr. Jury. We'll do the conversation in English, of course. Uh, you're French, but uh, I guess you speak perfectly English. I hope so, and thank you very much for having me, by the way. Thank you. Uh, maybe a first general question. After the sale of the offset division, you lose 1,700 members of your personnel. You lose 40% of your revenue. What is remaining of Agfa Gevaert and what is the strategy for these uh, different divisions? Well, as you know, Agfa is in full transformation. And the story of the transformation of Agfa is pretty simple. This is about the digitalization of the economy. Uh, we are switching from a fully analog world um, many years ago to uh, what I guess is an hybrid world and soon to be uh, dominated by digital. So today, uh, transformation of the group is uh, not yet fully complete. 50% of our business is digital native uh, these days. And the move uh, of offset is uh, representative of the portfolio uh, uh, strategy that we want to pursue. First, we uh, want to develop further in digital and we want to make sure that we operate in growing markets. So this is what it's about. So post offset, the group has really two parts in a way. The uh, still important part related to the ancient core business of the company, the film business, mainly in healthcare for radiology, but also in industrial usages. This is uh, operating in stable market and it's generating a lot of the cash that we need to invest into the growth areas of the company. Is, is that only uh, the traditional printing plates that we all know, uh, the X-rays or uh, digital X-rays as well? Alors, it's not anymore uh, printing plates. Huh? It's hard copy films uh, that are uh, printed on demand uh, through printers. But it does also include the direct uh, radiography business, uh, the digital one, huh? this business. So three growth areas for the group. A few, um, going forward and, and, and already very nicely developed. First, healthcare IT, medical imaging IT, meaning we provide uh, hospitals in the world the ability to manage all digital imaging coming from different uh, uh, image capture uh, machines like PET scan, radiology, or even cardiology. So that's one. The second gross engine of the group is digital printing, and that's very illustrative of the transformation of the company. We sell offset, uh, we invest in digital printing, and we made recently an acquisition to accelerate the growth. The main difference being that offset operates in a decreasing market, digital printing operates in a strong growth market. So we are positioning ourselves for growth. And last but not least, we have a couple of activities and especially one that is a part of uh, addressing the energy transition world uh, need of the world, uh, deco decarbonization of the world. And we are active in uh, the green hydrogen segment. We are producing uh, membranes which are critical to performance uh, in establishing a green hydrogen uh, capacity. So one so very exciting things, in fact. One of the things for the future. One of our readers asks, what do you see as the main competitive advantages of uh, Agfa? In other words, he asks, why should I invest in your shares? We are a technology company. Uh, we invest 7% uh, of our uh, sales uh, uh, in innovation, our research and development uh, uh, by large. We are an imaging company, and we have been able to transfer the core competence of Agfa of the analog world into the digital world. And our forte is to be able to produce solutions for our customers. In digital printing, we are, we are not only an equipment maker, but we also provide the software to make it work and the inks, and we are managing the overall performance. And that's really what, what is in the DNA of uh, ACFA, being able to produce value-creating solutions for our customers through innovation. And we've been successful uh, doing that for many, many years. And in what you do, are you one of the world leaders or what is your position in the world, uh, in, in these uh, remaining activities? 
Uh, in, in our uh, growth activities, in healthcare IT, we have a leadership position uh, in Europe um, and still a challenger position in North America, which is, by the way, for me, the first priority is to uh, grow in uh, North America and especially in the U.S. market. We have the right technology to do so. Uh, but in all the markets we operate, I would say uh, we are in the top five, including in the U.S. Uh, in digital printing, it's a little bit more complex uh, as it's an embryonic market uh, and our role is not necessary to be the largest. We prefer to operate in added value segments where our technology can uh, be leveraged. Uh, in fact, regarding green hydrogen, uh, today in the membrane Indeed. world of al al alkaline membranes, I mean, it, it, we are clearly the market leader by, by far. And I would even say today we, we have a significant lead over competition. Okay, it's something the shareholders will like to hear. Uh, another reader asks, what is Agfa's future in Belgium? You have a large site in Mortsel. What is the future for that? And what are the biggest challenges to operate in Belgium? Well, first, uh, Belgium is a home country. Uh, Belgium, uh, these are our roots uh, as well. And today uh, we have indeed the largest industrial footprint uh, in Belgium, uh, as you know, in Mortsel, uh, near Antwerp. Huh? So, uh, we are, and we are, we are very proud of that and we have a very good, uh, I would say, setup. 40% of the group's um, people are located in Belgium. So we are, we are firmly rooted in, uh, in Belgium and that's part of uh, also our, our DNA. Uh, most of the businesses today are operated in Belgium. The only business uh, that uh, is not operated from Belgium is uh, medical imaging IT. And the reason is very simple. 60% uh, of the global market is, in fact, in the U.S. So you need to lead this business from the U.S., which is also where uh, innovation takes place in, uh, in IT. But the rest is being managed uh, uh, out of Belgium. Now, you know, Operating in Belgium, anyway, is not uh, a choice for us. Uh, this is where we are, and we need to make the conditions to do it competitively. So are we happy to be in Belgium? Yes. Uh, does it mean that um, we're happy about everything that we see operating in Belgium or in Europe? Yeah, we have some challenges that we can probably discuss further. Okay, we'll talk about that uh, later on. Uh, another reader asks, Agfa was the last decade's story of continuous continuous and expensive reorganizations. When will this stop? When will you stop reorganizing the company? But it's not really reorganizing, but I would more say transforming and repositioning uh, the company. Is it a continuous um, process? It's or? a continuous process anyway. I think we are, uh, I'm doing a lot uh, right now. I'm changing a lot of things. I'm changing probably more in the past couple of years than was done in the past 10 years. The reason is being, you know, I'm touching the portfolio. I'm touching the operating model of the group. I'm looking at the culture. I'm bringing also key talents to the group. So it's, it's, it's a number of transformation. But first, transformation is an ongoing process and the world is changing fast and you need to be also very adaptable and flexible and quick on your feet to do that. This being said, the significant wave of transformation projects will continue for probably two to three years after After that, I expect a more stable uh, view for the company. Is it expensive? Yes, it's expensive. But again, doing a, a pivot from the analog world to the digital world is quite complex, quite long. And uh, you need also, uh, indeed, to be able to transform uh, the company in going very deep uh, in your transformation. And it takes time. Okay. Uh, regarding the transformation, uh, there is another question. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody asks, following the sale of a part of healthcare, healthcare IT and the intended sale of the offset solutions, yep. what are the considerations per segment to keep them within the AGFA group or set them independently apart? And maybe uh, some, uh, some shareholders and even analysts speculate that you may even sell one of the the other remaining divisions. What is your view on that? No, our first priority is to redeploy the group and uh, to make sure we can uh, reposition the group to growth markets and, uh, and have a growing and profitable uh, group going forward. So my first priority is to really do that. So it means we have these three growth segments, digital printing, healthcare IT, uh, the medical imaging part, huh? and, and third, the green hydrogen membrane. The key priority is to grow organically or even potentially potentially through Bolton acquisitions, like we did in digital printing. But that's really uh, the roadmap for the next uh, years. 
Are there synergies between these three remaining divisions? Yeah, there, there, there are, uh, I would say, for everything that is film and uh, digital printing and green hydrogen membrane, there are synergies, common backbone, uh, common, uh, I would say, competencies uh, and common uh, use of uh, resources. Healthcare IT is managed a bit differently since it's an IT business, while the other part of the group is more film and chemical. And here, the synergy you have, of course, is the market. Uh, we're operating in healthcare market. We're addressing basically the same customers when we sell uh, radiology products. Uh, so this is the synergy of the group. Okay. Um Another reader asks, yeah, some analysts think that if I can sell its remaining healthcare, healthcare IT business, I think you answered that yes, already. Yes, as I said, the first priority is we have a huge uh, growth opportunity and value opportunity, and this is really what it's all about. I just, uh, you know, I'm just investing in a, in, in a top uh, US-based executive team in order to reinforce our ability to grow in the US. So this is the play. We want to grow it. We believe we can create a lot of value. Okay. Regarding these uh, three remaining divisions, in which do you see the most growth potential? But the most growth potential, uh, and, and maybe the least potential as well. Uh, no, all three. I would say it's not. It's not. I would not express in this way. I think that it's a different life cycle, so to speak. So green hydrogen, I see, without play on words, an explosive growth. If you allow me to say that, why? Because it's just starting the green hydrogen. For the timing, the installed capacity is uh, negligible. But the ambition of Europe and other countries, by the way, not only Europe, are absolutely huge. If I take uh, the current uh, market of today, you're talking about an ambition in the next year, in the next 10 years to multiply by 200. You know? So it's, it's extremely significant. And in terms of growth rate, it's unbeatable. And the, the current energy crisis is helping the growth. Absolutely. The current energy crisis is, uh, of course, uh, totally going in favor of hydrogen. So it's even more, you know, a strategic concern of Europe to be self-sufficient uh, in uh, energy. So here it's a fantastic uh, opportunity, but we're starting from a very low base. It's almost a startup within the company. Uh, Elsker IT has been... Um, has been around for some time, but there is today a renewal of the technology, meaning that if you look at the total market, uh, you would say, yes, it's a growing market, but it's not a highly growing market. However, the portion that we are addressing, uh, we come with a concept that is slightly different uh, from what is existing today in the market. This portion is growing double digit, and there is indeed a good opportunity for us to, 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 to grow, but we're starting from an established base. And third, digital printing, it's a bit in between. You have segments uh, of the digital printing market that are growing 5% per year, but we are directing ourselves also to uh, introduce digital printing in new segments. And here you're talking about growth uh, up to 20, 25% per year. So very, very different uh, life cycle. I have an internal startup, I have a very attractive uh, healthcare based uh, growth, and I have a market making growth of digital printing. Three different cases. Okay. Um, someone is asking, uh, you were talking about the energy prices. To what degree do the higher energy prices impact the results of AGFA? And uh, a second question, more elaborate, uh, is there still a future for the industry in Europe? Or would you rather invest, if you had a choice, to invest out of Europe at this moment? Mm -hmm. No, very good questions. Uh, first, uh, energy prices uh, is impacting us, huh, like everyone. However, not yet to the full extent, meaning that uh, we have long-term contracts uh, still in place uh, that guarantee us uh, for a period of time, I would say relatively stable prices of energy, at least in Belgium. Uh, and, and for how long is that? It depends, but it's a, a year to two years, depending on the energy source. So we still have a, a bit of time in front of us. However, however, indeed, I think energy is a strategic challenge for Europe. Huh? Even for us, we are not a highly energy intensive industry, but, but even not being a, a pure basic chemical player or a glass maker, we are still, uh, we are still, uh, 
um, impacted by high energy prices. So it's, it's an issue for Europe because it means, uh, indeed, you see the rapid disappearance of uh, a lot of energy-intensive industries uh, in Europe. We are not part of that, uh, uh, but energy is also important for us. And what worries me is I'm competing with US-based competitors having access to cheaper energy and Asian-based competitors also having access to better energy sources. So it creates for me a competitive disadvantage uh, going forward. Now to the question on Europe, I think you can extend it very, 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 very soon. You've seen today a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, industries that have shut down or reduced capacity already in Europe due to the energy prices, and this is replaced with imports. So yes, it's a, it's a significant issue for the European uh, industrial footprint uh, going forward. And I was, uh, and I, uh, and I know for a fact uh, that today already the industrial consumption of gas in Europe has been decreased by uh, double digits due to this phenomenon. Huh? Meaning, meaning it's a, it's a threat for the European industry. For us, in so Africa, let, let's hope that prices will start decreasing. Yeah, but you know, uh, I cannot uh, just rely on that. I need also to make the necessary steps to try and mitigate the energy price increase. The good news is by doing that, we will also certainly reduce our uh, CO2 footprint, which is anywhere our intent. So that's going to accelerate this uh, drive, this move to, I would say, cleaner energy. We are still using gas today uh, in, uh, in, in Belgium, but we are going to more and more be using uh, cleaner sources of energy. And that was our intent uh, anyway. So it's, a, it's accelerating the trend. But I want to do it without jeopardizing my competitiveness. That's the name of the game. Okay, let's hope so. Um, another reader asks, uh, you were talking about the US uh, just a moment ago. Yes. What is the impact of the higher dollar uh, on the results? Because for some readers, it's not clear. Are you profiting from a strong dollar? Or is it the, the reverse? reverse? Well, I, I actually, I would say it's, ne it's neutral plus for us. Uh, we are a global company. So we have a global footprint. Uh, we have plants in uh, all continents. Um, uh, so we, we, and we sell also globally. So overall, and we buy a lot of raw materials, energy, raw materials, all the reference prices are dollar prices uh, as well. So when I look at the total picture for the group, slightly positive, uh, slightly positive. So not, not a first factor for us, given our global presence. Okay, talking about uh, the prices of aluminium and silver, uh, Agfa was once uh, uh, a playing ball. <laughs> uh, of these prices on the market. Uh, to what degree do they affect the results? Is it less than it used to be? Uh, the short answer is yes, and especially, you know, aluminium is related to offset. And offset, as you know, will, uh, will uh, leave the divesting. portfolio of uh, ACFA, so it's, uh, it's not an issue anymore. Uh, and silver uh, today is still being used in our film business. It's probably a lot, well, lot less sensitive than we used to be on the silver price, but we still are to some degree. Having said that, in probably 60% of the case, we have contracts uh, with silver close uh, indexation. However, you know, aluminium uh, prices were at an all-time high, but we could also increase prices accordingly. Eh? So it will not drive the performance of the business, I would say. What you need to do is to be able to reflect this higher input price, input cost into your price. Is that an easy process? Can you uh, just ask higher prices to your customers? It's never an easy process, as uh, you know. Uh, however, uh, in most of what we do, and even in Offset today, what we do is uh, representing a very small part of the overall cost for our customers. And believe me, they are confronted with a lot more serious uh, uh, cost increase like uh, energy, like paper and whatnot. Uh, so the short answer, yes, we can do it. Uh, by and large, uh, we can do it. But we do it respectfully. We do it uh, respecting our contracts and maintaining, of course, a good relationship with our customers. It's not hurting the profit margins structurally. Actually, no. It's uh, rather, uh, actually, it's uh, rather improving structurally. Uh, your, your margins if you do it well. And that's what we have demonstrated, at least with offset. 
Okay. Um, there's a question just coming in. Uh, do you l- use silver swaps and other hedging techniques? Uh? We do not. Uh, we do not. Um, we do not. To make a long story short, we do not speculate on the market. <laughs> okay, we don't. We don't take positions on on the market. Huh? We are we are an industrial. We use silver industrially, so we buy it. Uh, you know, in a very you simple don't way. Hedge. Okay. In a very simple way. Okay. Uh, another question is: What is the impact of the higher interest rates? Uh, also, taking into account the pension obligations that Agfa has. Well, in fact, uh, the higher interest rates uh, is decreasing mechanically our liabilities. Uh, however, uh, these are liabilities, but in terms of cash impact for the group, it does not change. You know the amount of money that we pay to our pensioners. Uh, this is the case, uh, and I would argue that. On on the other hand, having higher interest rates means also uh, the economy uh, does a little bit less well. (laughs) So it's always a balanced uh, picture. But indeed, it does decrease our liabilities and we're happy. And as we have no debt, we are not suffering from uh, the raise of interest rates in in this area as well. Okay, it used to be different a couple of years ago, but now uh, you're financially healthy. I, I, I think you know the liabilities for pension were I, have been more than halved in, uh, in, in in a couple of years. Huh? We were we we were at 1.1 billion. We are now at round about 500 million. Okay, uh, another question that's coming in. Uh, somebody is saying you have a somewhat older. Uh, uh, an older demographic uh, picture. Uh, if you look at your employees, somewhat older employees than uh, uh, other companies in the sector, is this a disadvantage? Or are we now that we are in era of inflation, and um, will that be a handicap if you deal with competitors that uh, that are located in other countries without an automatic indexation uh, for your costs and your profit margins? Well, there are different questions here. On the demographics and the company, uh, indeed, the challenge for us is more to be able to replace all the competencies that will live in the next years. So we need, we will, we, we, we need and we will need a lot of hiring in order to make sure that uh, we are able to effectively transition from this situation. Huh? So the first, uh, first area, very important for us to be able to attract, uh, uh, I would say, talents uh, to ACFA. And, and that's what I suppose they're mostly doing. technical profiles. Not only technical profiles, uh, of course, technical profiles, but not only. Uh, we need also more generalist uh, profile. We need marketing profiles. Uh, no, no, it's it's wider than uh, just uh, technical. No, are those people easy to find. Right now, you 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 know that there is a kind of a war on talent in uh, in the market. Huh? So we have a tense uh, situation. But I'm happy to say that for the time being, we've been able to attract talents in the company. Now, to your point regarding indexation, Belgium stands out a bit. Uh, in uh, in the world, I would say, and even in, in, in Europe, huh? we are the only one having such an automatic indexation uh, system. But you're and increasing salaries elsewhere as well, I guess. Yes, but it's not the same timing. It's less automatic and we'll see probably the impact of inflation more in 23 than we've seen in 22. Uh, where typically in other countries you have yearly discussions on, uh, on, on, on salaries. So, so indeed, the automatic indexation is placing us um, indeed in a competitive disadvantage in, uh, in Belgium. We've got to live with that, uh, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, another reader asks, so what about your cash position? Uh, he asks himself, why are you leaking so much cash? Well, it, we, I think uh, the reader references to um, our end of June uh, situation. We have we have a significant working capital, uh, m- meaning we need to have uh, we, we have a need for inventory. We have very long supply chain uh, in 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 the areas where yes, the, the, the working capital capital so it's went up. Really, seriously. it's really the working capital, meaning it's not leaking cash. It's going to come back. Huh? A lot of it will come back during the second half. Will come back to our bank. Huh? No, 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 no issue there. But there is a seasonality. Huh? Typically, we build inventory until uh, summer. And we use inventory, you know, in the second part of the year. Then you had the impact of the inflation. Uh, indeed, the same inventory was costing more and was valued more in our account. But overall, 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna get it back uh, largely in the second part of the year. So negative cash flow uh, won't be a problem. Uh, no, no. I well, we will we, we'll still be in a negative cash flow this year because we we have made an acquisition, we have made a share buyback, and we uh, also. Uh, Um, have a significant transformation programs that are costing money, uh, but this is all being mastered. Uh, and and uh, we, you shouldn't look at uh, the end of June uh, situation as a permanent situation. Okay. Uh, somebody heard apparently uh, rumors that the transfer of IT activities to Atos, it's a French IT uh, company, is not running smoothly. Why did you decide to separate such a crucial activity to an external party? Maybe you can elaborate on the decision sure. first no, absolutely. Uh, to explain no, the first, situation. Uh, first, to explain the situation, uh, uh, we were doing everything in-house uh, at ECFA, okay? meaning we, had our own, we have today our own servers and a backup server room and so on and so on. So we were doing everything by ourselves. We believe that uh, in the world we live in, we need a more flexible model And what we are doing, we have not transferred our activities to, uh, to Atos. We have externalized part of the activities to Atos. Uh, so you, you keep the crucial parts in-house. We, we are managing still our own IT, okay? And Atos is a partner and a provider for us in a number of areas, but we remain in full control of what we are doing with our IT. Uh. So it's not like we are transferring a, a IT activities. When you do that uh, in, such a, in such a complex uh, environment, because we operate in more than 50 countries, uh, so, so it's quite... Uh, It's quite a difficult uh, puzzle huh, with different activities. Uh, we, it, it's clear that these are difficult projects. And what is being referred to, I guess, is we have a few glitches in the handover in the transition period. We are working very diligently in order to solve the issues. This, this is a bit uh, irritating, but in any way, no, no impact on our business, which is more important. So, so this is a normal difficulties of, uh, you know, getting started, but it soon will, uh, will improve a lot. Okay, that's clear. Um, somebody's asking, uh, you already talked a bit about it. Can we get a clear v overview of the pension liabilities uh, of the group? Well, as I said, Two years ago, we used to have liabilities of 1.1 billion euros. Uh, and we have four countries in which we have uh, actually significant pension liabilities. We have uh, done a series of actions and today we are back to uh, oh, about which, 500 Which countries million. Uh, are that? Uh, the US, the UK, Belgium and Germany. Uh, and we have, uh, these are the four countries where we have the... the The, really most of these liabilities. Uh, today we are b we are about 500 million, uh, so more than half of where we, what we were before, and especially the amount of cash that we need to pay every year has been reduced also very significantly. So today what's left actually is an unfunded obligation in Germany, uh, whereby actually we pay directly a number of, pen of pensioners every year. Uh, that's what is That's what is left in terms of uh, significant uh, pension liabilities. Okay. Um, some questions about the products, and most of the questions uh, involve the hydrogen uh, technology. Fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely, especially <laughs> in light of uh, the energy crisis at this moment. Yes. Um, when do you expect a breakthrough in your hydrogen technology, somebody asks. Uh, if a breakthrough means um, that it becomes a significant business, Uh, I think, you know, you are about three years out for this. Huh? We are seeing uh, today a very rapid growth, but from a very, very slow base. Huh? Uh, but uh, two years ago, we had a handful of customers. Today, we have 50 customers. Uh, the sales figure that we expect for 22 is three times what we did in, uh, in 21. Next year, it's going to be maybe three, four times more. So that's what you're talking about. So it's a rapid ramp up. Now, breakthrough means when it starts being material for the company. And I would say you're talking 25, 26. But what we are doing is actually we are preparing the future. We are uh, looking at uh, investing in a capacity in Mortsel. So you see industry is still attractive in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, we will do it on our site. It's a new small factory within 
the larger factory. Uh, not so small, actually, but it's a, yeah, it's a factory within the factory. Yeah. We have a lot of different uh, units. Um, and indeed, we are busy preparing an investment to face the ramp up of uh, the hydrogen uh, business. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked, can you exactly explain what you what do? What it is, for what, the, what, the, what yeah. we do. Bon, I, I don't products. want to be too technical, huh? but uh, how do you make hydrogen? You take electricity and you run it through water. It's called water electrolysis. Huh? And what you try to do, water is H2O, uh, and, and you try to separate, uh, you, sep you, you create hydrogen and oxygen. But the two gases do not mix, actually. Uh, so what we provide is what is called uh, uh, a separation membrane that uh, actually yeah. separates it's called effectively. Zirfon, I guess. Zirfon is a brand name. Uh, this is a brand name, Zirfon, and it separates the two gases. But not, it, 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 it not only it, it does this, but it's also strongly influencing the performance, actually, of uh, the production of hydrogen and especially the yield, meaning how much electricity is going to be effectively turned into hydrogen. Uh, so that's that's clearly where we have also a, a very strong added value. So it's a small part within the overall uh, install of an hydrogen factory, but it's a critical to performance part. Okay. Somebody's asking, uh, do you have enough financial resources to expand this product? Oh, yes, we do. Actually, uh, the money, uh, the investment that we need to do is mostly today an industrial investment, and you're talking uh, a few tens of uh, millions of euros, and yes, we, we have the resources to do it, yes. Okay. A question coming in uh, regarding uh, sustainability. Um, How is AGFA progressing to meet the United Nations 2030 sustainability targets? Well, we have uh, we have formalized uh, today uh, our sustainability policy. We have not yet uh, fully uh, made it public. Huh? We will, huh? but uh, clearly we are working on uh, five uh, specific areas. The first one is employee well-being and especially safety. Uh, where we want to reduce uh, the number of safety uh, incidents uh, within our uh, operation. Then we are working on diversity, equality and inclusion. Uh, and especially we want to increase uh, gender diversity uh, everywhere and specifically also at management level in the, in the company. Third, is, is, is Agfa still a male company? Or we have 23% uh, women in our, uh, in our activities. Remember, we are an industrial company and it's more challenging also to have uh, more women uh, in, in plants. Uh, I, I wish we could, but it's not always that easy. So 23. And today we are hiring at the rate of our new hirings are at the rate of uh, more than 30%. So we are making progress uh, in getting there, but we are not there yet. It's still a journey. CO2 footprint. Uh, basically, we, we, we want to commit, we are committing to do, uh, to follow the Paris Agreement. Uh, and, and indeed, we are, taken, we, are, we are taking every step possible to reduce our footprint. Uh, we now have PV cells uh, uh, in the roofs uh, uh, in Mortsel, which is new. As I told you, the energy crisis will lead us to accelerate uh, the transition to non-CO2 source of uh, hey, energy. Using more hydrogen, probably. <laughs> hydrogen, I'm not sure, but electricity for sure. <laughs> that's going to be part of uh, that's going to be part of the mix. We are also looking at the, the sustainability of our product portfolio. Uh, that's a, that's a clear area where we want to to, to pursue. And also, we are um, we are being assessed uh, right now by a third party uh, in order to have a rating. So yes, we have a, a sustainability in place. I think it's extremely important for us, and we I, I'm pleased with the progress we are making. But we have yet to make it more public. Uh, I would say. Okay, another question uh, regarding. Something completely else. Uh, one of your growth engines is the Ingjet business. Yes. Uh, do you have any comments on the profitability on the profitability of uh, that business? Because uh, the reader says that questions are raising about the profitability even after more than 10 years that you're active in this uh, domain. You know, uh, that's a business in which we are still today uh, significantly investing. Uh, that's a business indeed uh, that is still uh, in investment phase. Uh, I was talking to you about the different maturity stage of our growth engines. Uh, we are getting there. 
Well, well, we are. Uh, I, I, I would say, for me, it's not, uh, it's not an issue the profitability of the inject uh, market. Uh, we are taking a lot of steps to invest uh, a lot more in this area to get to critical mass and to address uh, new market segments. So yes, it takes time uh, because it's a, it's a significant investment still today in uh, in R and D uh, and also uh, I would say in all the infrastructure you need to support the business, but I'm. Absolutely not concerned about the profitability of this business. Uh, it's, uh, it is going to become uh, one of the best earner in the company in the next year, in, in, in the next years. Okay, it's still a growth in engine. Nice yeah, to hear. Yeah, yeah. Another question uh, somebody's asking, uh, it's regarding uh, the sale of the offset uh, printing business to Aurelius. Yes. Um, how far in the future is the commitment of the Aurelius group uh, reaching for uh, the offset printing business. The, readers, uh, the reader asks himself, uh, yeah, there, there must be plenty of Chinese companies that would love to acquire this business from Aurelius uh, within a couple of years. Well, first, uh, I'm not going to speak on behalf of Aurelius. Uh, so I cannot uh, comment on what they are going to do with the business. But it's an investment group. It's a, it's a portfolio. Uh, yeah, it's an investment group. Indeed, they have a portfolio of uh, companies. And indeed, uh, these companies tend to hold uh, their uh, portfolio companies for a given uh, number of uh, years. But I'm going to stop here. I cannot comment on their intent. What I can tell you is, indeed, you have Chinese companies operating in the offset business, but not at all with the same positioning. Uh, and... Um, And they have a positioning very different from the positioning of uh, the ACFA business. And on top of that, I would also make the comment that uh, China has uh, changed a bit behavior these past years. And I see a lot less of acquisitions by Chinese companies uh, in, in, in the world. And I think it's becoming, it has become a bit more difficult. And especially right now that China is a bit shut down with, uh, with the COVID-19. Uh, it's not really accessible to Westerners and so it's not it's not easy today to uh, to 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 look at such projects okay a question just popping up uh, how strong is Akva's uh, position in uh, China how strong uh, well uh, it's uh, Every time we operate in China, um, I believe we have a strong position uh, in all our, our businesses. So if I look at uh, uh, business by business, when we want to operate in China, which is not the case for every business, we have a significant market share. Yeah. And, and do you see the situation deteriorating at this moment because of the new COVID uh, restrictions? What we are seeing is, uh, yes, of course, the Chinese economy has slowed down. And indeed, uh, it started uh, already during the second quarter of this year due to the COVID lockdowns. I mean, that's pretty, pretty clear that it has a strong impact on the Chinese economy. If you cannot operate plants and, uh, and if people are not free to go and and and, and, and spend and go to the hospital and so on and so on. So yes, it has a tremendous impact. And as we are in China, yes, we are seeing it very clearly. Okay. From China back to Mortsel near Antwerp. <laughs> Somebody's asking, what about the physical space you have uh, in Mortsel? You used to have more than 10,000 employees. Now they're about, uh, he's asking how much in Mortsel. And uh, uh, are the premises getting too large for Akfa? Uh, we have still about 3,000 employees in uh, Mortsel, so it's still a sizable uh, uh, number, I believe. Uh, yes, we do have, uh, I would call it, it's, it's complex because it's a plant, it's a research center, it's a headquarters. We have also demo rooms for solutions. So it's quite, uh, it's quite a complex uh, campus, uh, if you want. You're not going to transfer, transform it into uh, apartments? Um, not sure this is the plan, no. We, <laughs> still, uh, we, still, need, uh, we still need the land and, uh, and the occupation. But indeed, um, indeed, when we look at Marcel, we need also to look at the future of the site. And indeed, today, the footprint uh, that we have on Mortsel, and I'm not talking the, the industrial part, but more the administrative part, can probably be optimized for sure. But this is a secondary subject. Uh, my first focus is really to transform the business. Huh? Okay, that's clear. Uh, someone is asking, will there be any spin-offs with all the engineering talent uh, you have in the group? 
Oh, well, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not planning any spin-off and uh, the very talented engineers are uh, fully employed uh, to, uh, to industrialize our green hydrogen membrane and uh, do a lot of things for the group. <laughs> okay. So I'm not planning to do that, no. Let's go to the share price of Agfa. It has been under strong pressure uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, such as le, la, the market as a whole, of course. Uh, <laughs> what is your personal opinion about uh, the current share price, if well, you I have one? No, I don't have an opinion on the share price. I mean, the market is putting a price on the share, and that's it. I don't have an opinion about it. Uh, my, my, my focus is, is really um, to, to, again, to reposition the group, you know, uh, on attractive uh, markets and to make sure that we can have a sustainable and profitable business model. This is really what drives me. We are still in a bit of a transition, uh, but uh, the end game is very clear for me. I know where we need to go and that's what I'm focusing on. So do I look at the share price? Yes, but as you know, the share price will depend on the market environment. They will uh, depend on the reading the, 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 the market has on the, uh, on the key trend impacting you. I'm looking at it uh, and I'm sensitive to delivering short-term results, but really my goal is to uh, is a mid-term goal to, uh, to I would say, position the group in a much better place compared to where we have now. You're uh, looking at it daily or not? But <laughs> I, I always, you know, I'm I'm a good reader of the Tate, huh? so I'm uh, looking at it nice to uh, hear that. <laughs> a bit. Huh? But no, it does not obsess me, and I don't look at it uh, daily. Okay. Um, w what about an eventual dividend? Uh, it's long ago that Agfa paid a dividend. Uh, will, be the, will there be a dividend again in the medium term? Again, things need to be in order. Okay, we, we, we indeed, you're right. We have not paid a dividend for some time, but I did a share buyback huh, that ended, uh, f by the way, in June huh, uh, of this year, which was the first time that shareholders had a form of reward huh, in, in many, many years. First things first, huh? as I said, uh, I want to focus on uh, the future of the group to set it on a good course. And whenever we'll be out of this transformation uh, uh, phase, of course, we will consider uh, getting back to a dividend policy. But it's a bit too soon right okay, now. Because to, so, uh, somebody is also also asking what are the priorities for your cash cash position at, at oh, this very, very simple uh, i'm uh, i want to invest the cash in uh, making akfa uh, a sustainable profitable growing company so that's my priority reinvesting the cash in the business and that should be positive for the share price as well in that's the long exact, term of course that's exactly right and i think it's a good investment okay another question about the future of the film business how do you see that Film business is a mature uh, business. You've got two main usage of the film today. Still, it's being used in healthcare and radiology to print images, even if they are captured digitally. Uh, and that's quite important in a number of countries uh, where people are still responsible for their own medical records. So it's not going away uh, for the time being. Uh, it's stable. At some stage, it might disappear, you know, over time. And the industrial uses of um, film, uh, mainly in what we call non-destructive testing, uh, basically it's radiology for planes, for pipelines and whatnot, that's also very important. And that's also a pretty stable market. So I, I would say for these markets are, are mature, but I don't see any quick or fast disappearance of uh, film. Okay. Uh Another question on uh, the hydrogen uh, membranes. Uh, someone is asking, how will you predict your current market position? Uh, because there are uh, cheaper foreign uh, technologies who are also approaching this market. Is that so? Um, well, uh, it's not about cheap. It, it, it's about value. Uh, the, the, the cost of the membrane you know, if you gain 1% productivity, meaning you transform, you do more hydrogen from the same electricity, it's worth 100 times more, you know, than the price of the membrane we're selling, so to speak. So, no, I'm not concerned, you know, about, um, about uh, the low end of the market, uh, uh, because I believe that what we do provide is a very safe and performing uh, product. Uh, and 
I don't think anyone is going to cut corners on safety. And I think the productivity is more important than the price at which you, 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 you buy your membrane. So I'm not, I'm quite optimistic in that. And actually, I see the reverse today. Uh, actually, we are seeing a lot of interest right now from China, uh, Chinese players coming to our membrane because uh, they understand the value that we can provide. So this is a reverse, actually. Okay. Uh, let uh, me see. Maybe a final question on your own position, uh, Adagfa. Do you see do you see yourself remaining for at least a couple of years? And uh, uh, how do you feel uh, living in Belgium? Someone's asking. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. Well, first, um, I've been in Agfa two two years and a half. Um, we are still in the middle of the transformation, and I'd like to uh, see it through. Uh, Um, you know, before ACFA, I've stayed in the same company for more than 30 years. I think it tells you something about me. You know, I'm committed. Uh, I'm committed to uh, to companies when I work for a, a company. And I th believe that, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see through the potential of ACFA. And I've been living in Belgium, well, actually close to 10 years. So I think it's a self-explanatory uh, Uh, answer, you know, if I was not happy in Belgium, you would have you know, moved already. Probably. Yeah. Huh? So I'm quite happy. Uh, I think there is even a saying, uh, happy as French uh, in Belgium, because uh, the French people are very happy, I guess, in, uh, in Belgium. At least it's my case. I enjoy Belgium. Okay, nice to hear that. Thank you, uh, Pascal Jury, for answering all these questions uh, from our readers. And it was very nice uh, to have you here. Thank you, Serge. En jullie ook bedankt voor het kijken naar onze CEO Talks. Volgende maand zijn we er opnieuw met een andere CEO. Bedankt voor jullie vele vragen die we helaas onmogelijk konden beantwoorden. En ik hoop jullie volgende keer terug te zien.